So my little story is I fell in love with German Johnson tomato. Are anybody familiar with that one? Uh, it's a large, low B, ugly, irregular fruit, but it's delicious, extremely meaty. Uh, I also like now Cherokee Purple and Arkansas Travelers, some of those. Um, but in my family business, we got our seeds from a store owner in Winston-Salem. And that's what he did to make a little extra income is save seeds and, and sell them. And they weren't commercially available at the time. And I started thinking, well, what happens when this guy you know, retires or dies or the barn burns down? They're lost forever. So back in the early 70s, I actually sent seeds of German Johnson to Seed Savers Exchange and Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. And they started to grow them out and all, eventually they, they're offered to the public. And German Johnson is widely available now. Um, I get hungry just looking at these pictures. Uh, you can go on Google and just you know, get lots of nice pictures. Um, but the idea is uh, a very flavorable product that doesn't ship well or doesn't meet regulations of, of consistency that you know, the modern consumer uh, is sold into buying. This is my dream of having a German Johnson plant where I can you know, pick from the heavens. Uh, it's a trained uh, tomato, paste tomato of some sort in a greenhouse coal frame. Tomato heaven is what I call. Um, what I don't cover or I confuse you about is an excellent book, Seed to Seed. Uh, I noticed several of the booksellers sell that. This was produced by the uh, 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 Seed Exchange and it's available in Spanish and French and several other languages. And it's a great guide to primary uh, vegetable varieties. You need to realize that the common vegetables that we use, we've basically interacted with wild plants and have selected for ease of collection and growing. For example, wild oats, they shatter and throw their seeds around. They also have a, um, an awn that will effectively drill the seed into the ground. Humidity changes cause the, the little awl. And our breeders have selected for non-shattering so that we can collect them and also uh, all lists so they're easy to clean. So these plants are now dependent on us. They cannot survive or, and, and really grow uh, without our hands-on help. So this is, in contra this is the benefit of our ancestors. They've gone to a lot of trouble to select plants that are easy for us to save. This will be in contrast later, I'll mention um, native plants and wild seeds that are still very um, adapted to, to having to have, say, a cold stratification period to germinate. Um, so they're a little trickier. So uh, I'll just throw in, these are a little small and unreadable, but you need to learn 20 or 30 terms. Uh, these are uh, flower and inflorescent types. It's important you know how to identify the plant and when it's in flower, um, in botany, we classify plants into families that have similar fruit types. So um, once you know, uh, there's several things. You can identify your plants uh, by flower. And by knowing the type of inflorescence, um, you know which seeds mature first and which aren't uh, mature yet. Basically, spikes, the lower flowers come out first. Those seeds are ripe the earliest. Whereas you go up, you get younger and younger. So some of this is a call to when do you collect, uh, what percentage are ripe when you collect. So you need to get a little botany book to, to learn some terms. Um, these are showing different fruit types. There's some fruit types that are basically dry. Um, when they're mature, they, they change color. A lot of them are in capsules that the seed uh, will split their natural lines where they're, like for example, beans or, or legumes will split and try to spread. Um, uh, the dry fruits are very easy to save. You basically notice a, a color change uh, and you can start collecting. The fleshy fruit are a little bit more difficult because that flesh needs to be removed from the seeds. Um, probably everybody knows the story of multiflora rose. Uh, it was a 
a plant that they didn't think that it would spread easily, but when it goes through the digestive gut, of a, uh, it gets acidified and le uh, the um, seeds are scarred by digestive juices so that moisture and uh, oxygen can get into the seed. So basically, wherever the birds then poop, you've got uh, multiflora. So uh, uh, in most cases, the flesh is edible, but plants don't want you necessarily crushing the seeds or many seeds that have cyanide and other compounds. So nature's divide systems to get animals to eat flesh, to eat the flesh of plants and to spread seeds, but not damage the seeds.